Such a block may rarely be needed, but you can learn many important things about constraints and create other dynamic blocks with slider controls. Set the units to make it easier to create the block. Clockwise. All other settings can be left as you like. You will need the tool palettes, which you can access with the tool palettes command or the control plus 3 shortcut. In the constraints tab you will find geometrical constraints and dimensional constraints. If you draw an object, you can use the default grips to change it in all directions. But if you use only one constraint, for example the perpendicular, then no matter how you move the object, the selected corner will always remain 90 degrees. If you hover the cursor over the small icon, AutoCAD will highlight the elements where the constraint applies. You can see, no matter how much you distort the object, these two elements always remain at right angles. Another important constraint for us is fix, which fixes the point of the object in the coordinate system. So whatever you do to the object, that point stays there. This can of course work for two or more separate OG objects. If you use the equal constraint, whatever you do to one object, the other will be exactly the same length. Add the parallel constraint to the existing ones. You can see that no matter how you move one object, the other object will be the same and parallel to it. You should also use the fixed constraint, so that the object does not wander. You can see that by moving one object you can control another. Of course, there is a level when there are too many constraints, so you should always think carefully about which constraint you are using and for what. In addition to geometric constraints and dimensional constraints, there is also the constraint parameter. But this only exists in blocks, so let's create one. Constraint parameters are available in the Constraint tab of the Block Authoring Palettes. If you also open the Tool Palettes, all constraints are available. The Block Authoring Palettes can be toggled on and off at any time with this button. First I apply a vertical constraint. This is a constraint on the y-axis only. You can see that these constraints are stored in a variable, like the NOR pseudo parameters.
Therefore the constraint can be created by mathematical operations. You can see that the priority is on the y-axis, not on the length, and it is fully met. I now choose the align constraint, which is different from the D1 type. You can see in the test that although D1 and D2 are different types of parameters, D2 takes the values of D1 perfectly. So let's try the same with the angular parameter. When testing the block, you can see that the angle parameter takes the values of the vertical parameter perfectly. Let's try this with a more complicated mathematical operation, for example, let angular be 15 times d1. As you can see, the angle picks up the value of D1 perfectly, but lacks the fixed constraint. Let's fix the base point. The test now shows that one object behaves like a control with the other object, i.e. the length of one object determines the rotation of the other object. See how this works for a more complex shape. Define the angle to an edge or side. The test clearly shows that only one element of the object has taken the values, since all polygons in AutoCAD are a chain of polylines. Define perpendicular constraints. Now two sides take the values, but the rotation axis is missing. Fix the axis of rotation. The base and the two long sides are now moving as intended, but the short sides are not yet aligned with the object. Give a dimensional constraint to one of the angles. Theoretically enough, since the other angles are no longer variable. The test shows that the whole object moves as desired. complicate the situation a bit, the angle should be 15 times the length. You can see that the default value is already implemented in the editor. The test also shows that the necessary constraints for the block have been created. First mark the center of the clock, then create the hands. For simplicity, I draw a center line, which I later make invisible.
Select the Align option from the dimensional constraints. Use it to fix the length of the center line and then the width on the minute hand. The coincident constraint is used to attach the shape to the axis. I send the constraint signals backwards so that they don't interfere, and then place the perpendicular constraint so that the sides of the hand are definitely parallel to the axis. If I fix one side of the hand and equalize it with the other, then in principle I can force the axis in any direction, the shape will not be distorted. Do the same for the hour hand. The order does not matter, the important thing is that all constraints are applied. Place the hands on the axis of the clock and rotate it slightly to make it easier to plot the angular constraint parameter later. Fixing the hand to the shaft is very important. When you have finished the clock hands, draw the clock face. There are no constraints here, everyone can be creative. I'm making a simple version, first of all, with schedules for the minutes. Then 12 schedules for the hours. I create four numbers. Finally a frame, which I fill with hatch. First, draw a baseline, which is the first line of the angles. Fix this at least at two points so that it cannot move or turn. Give an angle parameter to the hour hand.
And of course the minute hand gets one too. As you can see, with grips you can now move the hands very well, but still completely independently of each other. Turn off the grips, you won't need them as you will be using controls to set the clock. Create one unit line according to the drawing settings. If you are using horizontal controls, choose the horizontal parameter. One of them should be called for example H, which will give you the hour value, the other one should be called min, which will give you the minutes value. In the parameter properties you will find the value settings. The distance type should be set to increment with a value of 1. The min parameter should have a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 59. The H parameter should also have an increment of 1, a minimum value of 0 and The controls are working, but not yet controlling the clock. First I give the minutes value. In one minute the minute hand moves 360 per 60, that is 6 degrees. The minutes control is working reasonably well, but the hour hand is still dead. It seems logical at first that the hour hand turns 360 per 12 degrees in an hour, which is 30 degrees. You can see that both controls are already working, but the clock is behaving unnaturally by not displaying the past minutes on the hour hand. Here, for example, it should be exactly halfway between 10 and 11. The solution is relatively simple. The hour hand takes the 12th part of the last minutes after the given hour value. We need to add this to the value of H by a simple mathematical operation. Now the block works perfectly, we just need some fine tuning. We create a slider pot. This is a pentagonal plane figure that is attached to the grip. Because it's only one dimensional, meaning it will only move on the x axis, you'll need much less constraint. Objects created with constraints keep the constraints when copied.
create your own interface for the controls. The block can be copied multiple times within the drawing, blocks can be parameterized independently of each other. You can copy paste the block into another drawing. It will work independently of the units in the new drawing. You can turn off all the grips and make the controls invisible. Then you can set the time on the properties panel. And if you control the clock from the properties panel, why not do it with a list? Do the same with the minute hand. Pay attention to the correct values. I hope that this simple example will give you many ideas that will help you in your future work. Thanks for watching.